What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chadish. We're back at it again with the next episode of Critical Thinking. Um, talking about, again, leveling your opponent, um, attempting to counter the Grogos that you find in your Guild Wars or Arena. Uh, but we'll be focused more on Guild Wars. So um, leveling your opponent, you know, what's that all about? Again, if you've seen a couple of episodes prior to um, when we're talking about um, leveling your opponent, we're talking about thinking on that next level and thinking outside the box, thinking what you can do um, to counter what your opponent has countered, kind of thinking one step ahead. So um, we're going to be looking at a particular unit that some people have been fortunate to get in order to counter this one and, you know, go about it, you know, go about it that way. So um, for those that are uh, new to the channel, welcome to the channel. The Critical Thinking series is my first educational series that I incorporated back in October of 2014. Um, in an effort to give people some how-to guides as far as uh, improving their game, you know, across the board, whether it was PvE or PvP. So if you're looking for some old school content that's still beneficial to this day, um, the majority of it is still good. You know, go ahead and check it out. The playlist is on the main YouTube channel. Um, you can check out all the episodes there. Um, so let's get into let's before we kind of get into this unit. For those that are uh, new or have not seen this unit, we'll we'll do a little roundup here. Twenty-five percent chance or provoking uh, for ten percent chance, either or. And the attack power is based on defense. It has its uh, ability to buff its own defense and immunity, making um, him his damage from his first attack even better. And the ability to remove um, or to kill him by preventing hostile effects to come on him, um, you know, better for three turns. Uh, and then we got, you know, our bread and butter. Um, the ability to never take more than 20% of its mass HP on one attack. So there truthfully is no uh, unit out there that can one-shot this particular unit. So what does that allow you to do? This allows you to take advantage of stacking defense uh, way, way high and not worrying about, um, you know, units that can ignore defense. Um, so um, this allows you to take advantage of units, uh, you know, combining this with a healer that uh, increases, you know, flat HP, not percentage-based HP. Um, to take advantage of, you know, big, big heals because his hit points would be naturally low. In addition, this allows you to take advantage of the vampire rune set um, in order to kind of self-sustain and keep yourself alive and to get some damage. But um, the reason why we're going to be focusing on Guild War is because uh, people understand, again, we're, we're going to talk about kind of level one stuff, what, what people understand. What people understand is, you know, when you set up your Guild Wars um, defenses, you're going to be setting up your team's not so much to stall the opponent out, but um, you're going to set them up um, in an effort to attempt to obviously, you know, win by just, um, you know, taking them out completely or win, in essence, by uh, being able to take out a, a unit. So having kill potential on your on your team um, is extremely is extremely important. And, you know, believe it or not, this unit six star, you know, maxed out with skills, um, uh, defense broken. Uh, you know, with with his defense buff up, he can do. Uh, I've seen him do upwards of twelve to thirteen k. Um, uh, but you know, on average, I would say about ten to eleven k. Uh, I'm sure there's people that can claim more than that. You know, depending on you know if they're running Amon as a leader, or if they got uh, um, you know somebody else with a higher defense buff or a leader, something like that. So, um, you know, the reason why I bring this up is when you're when you're hitting somebody. Um, you know, for 10k a pop, you know, obviously a, vi a vampire is nice for self-sustaining, but when you think about what your opponent's thinking about and trying to provide kill potential on their team, you generally going to see um, this particular unit running at like a violent revenge um, because of the fact that, you know, the additional opportunities to, to hit, you know, really, really hard um, and, you know, proc a, a stun or provoke. Um, and also, obviously, you know, with the counterattack, the revenge, you have the opportunity to do the same as well. Um, but again, um, you know, when you've got a defense broken unit and you get the opportunity to do 10 to 12K a couple times in a row, that is extremely strong. You know, a lot of the DPSs that people bring are generally going to be around the, you know, 12 to 20K mark. Um, you know, your hybrids, your bruisers, your tanks, you know, those are going to be higher up. But the people that are bringing, you know, opponents are bringing units that are you know, a little bit more on the squishier side, they definitely have an opportunity to, um, you know, go for them and, and take them out, you know, if, if you get yourself some nice RNG. So, you know, how can we, how can we utilize this to our advantage? How can we, um, you know, think about countering this? Well, here's the deal. 
Um, obviously, we understand that light is attracted to dark, and it's always going to go for the dark units unless we have another light, uh, another unit that, um, you know, provides a defense break on a unit that it's neutral against. And of course, being a light unit, it's going to be neutral. So, um, my theory was essentially to bring uh, a familiar unit to some who was around in, in the Halloween of 2014 or have been fortunate enough to pull this, um, you know, since the game has come out, um, as Jultan. And so we'll go through the, you know, unit skills real quick. We got a hit point to serve on one. We got the uh, stun on two based on max HP. And then we got his bread and butter. Um, inflicts 12% of the max HP as damage when you're attacked with a critical hit. So when we think on that level that the that we're thinking about the opponent, if he brings a Grago, you know, he's generally, and, and, and Grago is the only one with a legitimate kill potential, right? If he brings a Grago with like an Amon or Annabella, you know, chances are he has his Grago decked out to no end because he's trying to kill your opponent with that, right? And then he has himself, you know, healers, to, healers upon healers to try to keep him alive, make sure he's alive so he can do the damage he needs to be done. Well, if that's the case, um, generally, especially uh, it, when we're talking about, again, at our level, mid to late stages of the game, um, you know, people are going to have themselves a nice collection of violent or revenge defense-based runes, right? We got a lot of, the meta's been focused around a lot of units that uh, focus on attack percentage or HP percentage. Um, they focus on, the, the, the focus is on those and trying to improve those. You're not going to see a lot of people, um, you know, at the late stage of the game, utilizing tons of units that are based upon defense because they're just, you know, they don't, you know, they, they're not fortunate enough to pull them. Some of the, some of the more common ones that people talk about you hear, um, you know, like Lizard Man, the, and, or the, uh, you know, the Archangels, you know, those are, those are kind of here and there, but, um, you know, you, there's just not as popular as some of the other ones here. So that being said, um, you, you're going to see a lot of people have relatively decent, you know, uh, defense, you know, defense based runes, you know, they're just going to be having them in storage, whatever. Um, so, with that in mind, setting this up for kill potential, you know, high crit rate, high crit damage, tons of defense, um, you understand that he's going to be critting a lot. So, um, you know, how do I go about countering that? Um, I bring Jewel Time in for that uh, third skill passive, okay? And so, um, what I want to enlighten you guys on is that um, the damage that it inflicts back to the unit on the passive, you know, 12% of its max HP, um, is is as damage and it is as that if that makes sense meaning there is no and again correct me if I'm wrong but um, from what I've un been able to you know gather here um, there is no uh, how do I say there's no like uh, f defense mitigating factor when it comes to um, the damage taken so um, in essence, uh, with, with Jolton, uh, for my Jolton, I'm sitting at about, um, uh, probably about 39, 40 K HP, you know, when he's all, you know, in, in with the leader skills, this and that, whatever. Um, and so, you know, generally he's got to be, you know, he's going to have himself anywhere from 4,600 to 4,800, um, damage done to whatever opponent it is, uh, uh, that hits him. And so... Why is this so strong? Is because if you have yourself, uh, if you're going in a fight with a Garago, and the Garago is the um, is the opponent that is, you know, has the most kill potential, and you know it's gonna, you know, probably wreck face. There's a relatively good chance that um, he will essentially uh, kill himself because um, when he stacks defense, what you know, his his greatest strength is also his weakness. When he stacks defense, his hit points are going to be low. And you're going to be able to take advantage of, you know, basically knocking him down 20% every time he attacks um, because the amount of damage that is inflicted, uh, assuming that you are at the level that I'm at and you are rocking, you know, five to six star plus 12 to plus 15 runes across the board, you're going to do enough damage to um, cap his his awaken, his, uh, his passive. Um, so what does that mean for you? It allows you to focus on his... Um, units that kind of um, go in with him, you know, the, the other opponent's units that um, are in the battle and allow him to basically just continuously hit your opponent and harm himself. Um, obviously, you're going to have to play, um, you know, you're going to have to, you know, play around with that and making sure that Jultan, if you're bringing Jultan, that's your one and only dark uh, unit. 
um, if they're utilizing the light trio. If they're not utilizing the light trio and they're using some other unit as a defense breaker, then obviously um, this really won't work too well because uh, an, uh, a, a, de a defense breaker of a different element, wind, uh, wind, water, fire, are going to be going for their, their element, right? They're going to be going for the element that they're strong against. But when you think about the current meta and what people utilize typically in the setups, right, in, in their setups, right, they're, they're trying to think, they're trying to get the most bang for, you know, for their buck, right? Um, so, you know, utilizing a, a unit such as Darien, such as Bella, it's obviously going to allow them to, you know, open open the capabilities of defense breaking anybody and, and allowing their opponents or their uh, uh, companions to go for that particular unit um, if, they, if they can. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and uh, finish this video off. Uh, with a little bit of clip, kind of showcasing, you know what ha what happens to Grago when um, Jolton is faced, and you'll also see a little bit of damage, um, a little bit of damage uh, done by uh, other various units, and you'll be able to see um, the difference, if anything, um, when it comes to um, taking a hit from you know his passive versus his um, you know somebody else's attack. So again, even though this, you know, in theory doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't state that it ignores defense. The fact that it is, um, the damage is based, 12% uh, of its max HP is taken as damage. Um, and the fact that it, it, it caps, I see the cap um, happening every time. I understand that the defense, if he has the defense buff applied, um, is not a factor. Okay, so whether that's the way it should be or not, that's what I see, and so that's why I'm bringing you this video today, as there's many Grogos out there, um, and people still run into issues with, um, you know, countless uh, uh, violent procs and, and big damage dealing Grogos, um, you know, with regards to that passive that it has. So again, guys, um, hopefully for the people that um, do have either one of these units, Grogo or uh, Jultan, can find some of this information useful. Stay tuned, as I will be showcasing Jultan in a in a in some future uh, Guild Wars in a, in a nice little trio that I've been utilizing for a while. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you all for tuning in. It's your boy Childish, your Childish Plays, checking out. We will see you in the next video.